For years, we have been exploring alternatives to proprietary operating systems with a particular focus on the Linux world. However, throughout our journey, we have encountered various challenges. These issues have ranged from Linux systems refusing to install on our hardware to situations where a system appears to be functioning well initially, only to be confronted with problems that demand advanced knowledge or necessitate the installation of yet another Linux distribution. Fortunately, it appears that we have stumbled upon a Linux system that has been operating flawlessly for several weeks now. It's a breakthrough. This particular system is not only stable, but also remains unbroken for any reason. It comes fine-tuned and pre-configured out of the box, providing a seamless user experience where everything works exactly as it should. Introducing Manjaro KDE. Long-time followers of our channel may recall that we previously explored Manjaro KDE. However, we encountered a few issues, primarily related to system updates that eventually caused disruptions. But this time, things have taken a different turn, and there is a small yet crucial element that sets it apart. Stay tuned to discover what makes this Manjaro KDE experience unique. At the start of October, we decided to give Manjaro KDE another chance by installing it on one of our production systems. To our pleasant surprise, Many features worked right out of the box without requiring any additional tweaking. One notable example is networking. Manjaro KDE effortlessly recognized our Windows network without the need for any additional tinkering or the installation of extra software, which is often the case with other Linux-based systems we have experimented with. Shortly after the installation, we were prompted with a substantial number of updates for Manjaro KDE. Given our previous experience with updates on Manjaro, we approached this with caution, closely monitoring the process. However, to our relief, the update proceeded seamlessly and after a restart, everything returned to normal. In addition to recognizing the network, Manjaro KDE goes a step further by automatically detecting our Windows network printer without requiring any further adjustments on our part. With everything functioning smoothly right from the start, Manjaro KDE proves to be a user-friendly operating system that doesn't necessitate extensive Linux knowledge to operate effectively. As a rolling release Linux distribution, Manjaro provides regular updates for the applications available in their repositories. For instance, we installed a Chromium-based browser ourselves, and Manjaro ensures that it stays up to date with the latest updates. A few days later, we encountered another substantial update, but once again Manjaro Spamac Software Manager handled the process smoothly, ensuring that our system remained intact without any issues. Allow us to share another example of our satisfaction with Manjaro KDE, the real-time internal sound recording feature in Audacity, such as capturing audio from web browsers works flawlessly out of the box. 
This functionality has proven to be problematic in some other Linux-based systems and even in Windows, often requiring additional configuration and adjustment. Manjaro KDE's seamless integration of this feature highlights its user-friendly nature and its ability to provide a hassle-free experience. Additionally, we want to highlight another significant update we encountered, which involved more than 1 GB of data, including the update of essential components like KDE's default file manager Dolphin. It's worth noting that this update proceeded without any issues whatsoever, further showcasing the stability and reliability of Manjaro KDE. We would also like to mention our positive experience with using app images in the Manjaro KDE build. In particular, we tested the app image version of LibreOffice, and the experience was excellent. It's worth noting that in the past, we encountered challenges when using app images with certain Linux distributions. However, Manjaro KDE proved to be exceptional in this regard as app images worked flawlessly right from the start. These aspects, such as seamless updates and reliable compatibility with app images, contribute to the overall satisfaction and usability of Manjaro KDE. Now, you might be wondering about gaming on Manjaro KDE. Our stance has always been that PCs and laptops may not be the most suitable gaming machines as they often require significant power and can be quite expensive. However, Manjaro KDE makes it incredibly convenient to install gaming platforms with just a single click using the Pemex Software Manager. Whether you are interested in Steam or Lutris, these gaming platforms are easily accessible through Manjaro's software manager. This eliminates the need for additional installations or searching for tutorials online. Manjaro KDE simplifies the process, ensuring that you can quickly set up and enjoy your favorite games without any hassle. While gaming on PCs and laptops may have its limitations, Manjaro KDE provides a user-friendly experience for gamers, making it easier to access popular gaming platforms and dive into the gaming world. It's great to hear that everything has been running smoothly for us with Manjaro KDE and we haven't encountered any breakages. The question arises as to why this time the experience has been different. Is it due to our improved Linux knowledge or has Manjaro matured into a stable and reliable operating system? One significant factor that has made a difference this time is that we have used Manjaro as it is, without enabling any additional software sources except for the official Manjaro repositories. This means that we haven't enabled third-party repositories like AUR or Arch user repository support, or Flatpak support through Manjaro's Pamac Manager. By sticking to the official Manjaro repositories, we are ensuring that the software we install comes from a reliable and tested source. This approach can contribute to the stability and reliability of the system, as it reduces the potential for conflicts or compatibility issues that may arise from using third-party repositories. This concludes the first episode of our series. In our next video, we will enable Flatpak support and report back on the outcome. We appreciate your support and encourage you to like, share and subscribe to our channel if you found this video helpful. Thank you for watching and we look forward to seeing you in our next episode.